webcams. Webcams actually have little to do with progressive video, but it is relevant to the video topic overall, so I want to show you how to work with them. Fortunately, the basics of working with the webcam inside of Flash and ActionScript are really quite simple. We still use the video class to display a video feed, but instead of the video feed coming from a NetStream delivering an FLV from a server, for example, the video feed comes from a camera object. And so we see here on this slide the basic code that would create an instance of the camera object, attach it to a video object, and display it on the stage. First, we create a camera object called camera by calling camera dot get camera. You'll note that camera is a static class and so we retrieve a camera with the get camera method rather than saying new camera. We then create a new video which this code will size to twice the width and height of whatever the native camera resolution is. Then we attach the camera to the video object as the source of the feed and then we add the video object to the stage. To get started, please navigate to the webcam folder and open webcam underscore start dot FLA and save it out as webcam dot FLA in the same folder. There's nothing on the stage and if we open the actions panel of layer one we'll note the comment blocks but no actual action script. We'll start with our variable declarations. As we saw in the sample code we're going to need a camera object and a video object. Var camera and var video. Then, under run on startup, we're going to create our camera object by running the get camera static method on the camera class. Next, we will create our video object sized at twice the camera width and twice the camera height. We will tell the video to attach the camera named camera. And finally we will add the video object to the stage. And so we'll save. And if we test this movie, we'll see that it works. Excellent. So we'll close this out. Now, that's the super simple code. But it really doesn't count for a lot of considerations. That is, it gets you up and running. It gets the video showing the webcam feed and on the stage visible to your users. But in real life, you're probably going to want to account for users uh, who don't have a camera, uh, who don't have a camera configured in Flash, or who've denied permission to access the camera. So we see here that prompt that we saw when we first tested the movie. And you'll see it any time that you request access to either the camera or the user's microphone. And you can only actually use any of the cameras configured on the user's computer if the user clicks allow. And so you're probably going to want to handle it if they click deny. You don't want to assume that they're going to click allow. Your application is going to want to handle that use case. So we listen to the status event on the camera, which will tell us when access has been granted or denied on the camera itself. To listen for the status event, we're going to add an event listener directly on our camera. So immediately following the line of code where we create our camera object, we are going to add a new line, camera dot add event listener status event dot status. And when we hear that event on the camera, we will call the function on camera status. Now of course we have to write the on camera status function. Since it is an event callback, we'll place it up here under the event handlers. And we'll start by declaring the function function on camera status to expect an event. 
open and close curly braces to define the function body. And now the piece of information that we need is the code of the event that triggered this callback. So we will want to know if the event code, evt.code, is equal to camera.muted, we'll trace out that camera access has been denied. Because when we hear the status event on the camera with the code of camera.muted, that's exactly what it means. We'll write another if statement to check if the event code is equal to camera.unmuted. And if it is, we will trace out camera access has been granted and close out that if statement. So now when we test this movie, if I click deny, you'll see that our code recognizes that. Now all we did here was include a trace statement, but in a real life application we could change the interface, present some sort of dialogue to the user, please enable your webcam to have a great time kind of message. And that is how you recognize that with the event code of the status event on the camera. Next, we are going to want to account for the possibility that the user might not have a camera selected on the system, which we would know if camera.getCamera returns null. If camera.getCamera returns null, that means that either the user has no webcams on their computer, or they have a webcam, or more than one webcam, but don't have it selected in the camera box on the Flash Player settings panel. A lot of people don't realize there is a Flash Player settings panel, and they don't know that you can get there by right-clicking on any Flash movie that hasn't disabled the option and selecting settings. But you can actually force open the camera selection panel directly from your application with the security.show settings command. So if we write security.show settings, security panel.camera, that would prompt open the security settings panel with the camera tab selected. And we will want to do this if the camera that we create with camera.getCamera is null. So returning to our code, we'll scroll down, and after we assign the event listener, here on line 36, I'll add a new line. If camera equals null, security.showSettings, securitypanel.camera. Now again, this is different. Again, this is a different situation from the user denying access to the camera. This is that the camera that we retrieved does not exist. And the three lines of code that follow this, we would only want to run if the camera does exist. So we will wrap those in an else. I'll tab those three lines in and then close the curly brace. And so now this is what our code looks like. When on run on startup, we create a new camera and listen for the status event on that camera. If the camera is null, then we'll show the security panel with the camera tab selected to allow the user to select a camera. Otherwise, we'll create the new video object, attach the camera as the feed to the video object, and add that video object to our stage. Your code should now match webcam underscore finish dot FLA, and that concludes this lesson.